Hey guys, and welcome back to another Conan Exiles video. Today we are back on the Exiled Lands, in the Tundra, in map square D9, building Daketo's Temple of Death. The mods used in this build are in the pinned comment below, but aside from the decorations, you can construct this build without any mods. So, without further ado, let's get started. Firstly, of course, the base plate. I've got another blueprint for you, and this build is honestly quite simple. It's made to look more complex with the rises on the roofs and the gothic accents, but at its core, this is going to be a really simple design. As you can see on the blueprint, the build is surrounded by a one tile perimeter of foundations, or fence foundations, to support ramps that will act as footers, so I'd say to build that perimeter first before you build up the actual traversable area of the build. Once I built the base plate, I then made a start on the walls and the standards. I built these gothic standards up and they will be used to add a lot of complexity to the build and to really solidify that gothic design. And I also built up the base walls of the buildings towards the back side of the temple, and I also placed door frames between the standards. Initially, I chose to only use storm glass, as it's really a perfect fit for the pre-existing themes and colour palette related to Daketo. However, whilst building, I decided to try and weave some Terranian in there along with the storm glass, and this was a pretty good choice. Terranian is easily one of my least used material pieces given how overly extravagant it is, but I do think it really nicely offsets the storm glass pieces in this build without deviating too far from the intended mood and style. I didn't go too overboard with this, I just mixed in just enough Terranian to make the walls pop a bit more, but I think it works really well. You'll get more of an idea of how it affects the overall build a little later on when it's more built up, but I think this was a really good addition to the material palette. Once I'd finished building the standards and the exterior room walls, I then built up the walls of said rooms, building the side rooms two tiles high, and the central pyramid room four tiles high. Next up, I added roof risers to the pyramid. Now this time I decided to go with off-center risers so I didn't obscure the design of the roof too much, whilst also making sure the risers were nice and tall to add even more to that gothic element I'll be establishing with the standards around the perimeter. I also then went back to the standards and built them up a bit higher, and I'll be adjusting the height of them in a pattern to give them a bit more shape. They will ascend upwards from the front, descend from the middle to the sides and then ascend a little bit again for the rear side of the pyramid. I then capped off the standards with storm glass rooftop pieces, which really are the perfect choice for this piece of architecture. Next I built a gateway at the entrance to the temple. I tried a couple of different ideas on this gateway, but in the end I went with what ended up to be a fairly simple design that utilises vaulted pieces and inverted corner roof pieces to build up that gateway and to create a really nice simple design that I think works well for what I really want to do. Thank you. 
Next, I built the roofs over the buildings at the rear of the temple. Over the two smaller rooms, I built really simple peaked apex roofs using regular and window storm glass pieces. Over the pyramid, I built a reasonably simple roof, again using storm glass, storm glass window, and terranean roof pieces this time, but rather than bringing it to a pointed apex as I would usually do, I instead brought it to an intersection apex using inverted corners which I then closed with slope sides. I've never really tried to use this sort of roof finish before, but I think it worked quite nicely in breaking the usual format of how I would usually do pyramid roofs. I also added a small gateway at the entrance to the pyramid, something which I didn't plan on adding, but in retrospect it was probably one of the best spontaneous additions to this build. Finally, I used storm glass ramps on the perimeter between the standards. This is why I added that lowered perimeter, as I thought it would benefit the build by having these tapered footers, and I think it actually works quite nicely. You could of course do this with roof pieces too, I think terrain roof pieces would work quite nicely here. I chose storm glass ramps, but either can work, it's really up to you. Finally, when the shell of the build was done, it was then time to, of course, furnish. Approaching the build, I've lit the temple with Aldari embrasures and stakes burning the corpses of the enemies of Diketo. This temple takes the interpretation of Diketo held by the southern cults in the Black Kingdoms, where Diketo is a goddess representing sacrifice, violence, and death. Shem and Stagai worship Diketo for her elements of fertility and depraved lust, though I've chosen to reduce the prevalence of those elements in this build to highlight the Black Kingdom's interpretation of the goddess. Outside the temple there is a small plaza area where the acolytes can sit and talk, but the main attraction sits within the pyramid. Within the Inner Sanctum, Diketo's altar presides over a room of death and violence, with mummified corpses sitting on spikes around her, and some particularly fresh human sacrifices laying in the middle of her altar. Some acolytes are currently worshipping here under the sermon of a high priestess, with zealots on either side of her ready to process any new sacrifices. On the left side of the pyramid is the Death Hall, a small room where the Diketo Zealots, identifiable by their death robes, dispatch prisoners, apostates and detractors, and prepare them for either sacrifice or the stakes. This grim room has a thick aura of violence, and it perfectly captures the essence of this interpretation of Diketo.
On the right side is the Archpriestess's quarters, a small room where she spends her time between sacrifices. Of course, this is far from a comfortable place for most. The Priestess is just as depraved as the Acolytes and Zealots, and death in this room quite literally hangs in the air, with the bodies of many sacrificed people hanging from the ceiling. And there we have it, Deketo's Temple of Death in the Tundra, in Map Square D9. Thanks for watching, it's been a good while since I built a god temple, and today I just had the urge to build a temple for Deketo. The actual backstory and lore of Deketo is quite interesting in my opinion, I like both of the interpretations of Deketo, but I feel like the more fertility and lust based one from Shaman Stigai is a bit overrepresented in the game, and you don't really hear much about the interpretation from the Black Kingdom so therefore I wanted to make a build around that today. As always, you'll find all the links to my Twitch, Discord, Twitter, Patreon, and NordVPN discounts in the description below, along with credit for the music used in this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, I put out at least two videos a week, so there's always plenty of content to come. If you have any suggestions for future builds, I would love to hear them in the comments below. As always, a massive thanks to our patrons Sadialot, Randar, Connor, Blue Ivy, Velma, Torn, Eagle Rose, and Meryl224. Again, thank you very much for watching, take care, and I'll see you soon.